Hello again, my name's John. I'm a retired cook from the northeast of England in the UK and welcome to my latest bread video. And in this one, I'll be making this fantastic sourdough crusty loaf and I'll be making it in my five quart cast iron Dutch oven. You can view the ingredients list and full written method for this recipe on the recipe page on the channel's website. I'll leave a link in the description under the video or you can click on the eye icon top right of the screen to take you directly to the recipe page. And I'd like to thank the Patreon and PayPal supporters for their very kind help. I'll be doing the shout out and name splash a little later in the video. Okay, let's get on with today's recipe. Right, you start the recipe by feeding your starter. So from your mother starter, which should be in your fridge, add 150 grams to a jug and allow it to sit at room temperature for around 30 minutes and it should look something like this. And once you're at this stage it needs to be fed so it's nice and healthy for when you start the recipe. And to feed it all you do is add 75 grams of flour and 75 grams or mils of water. Now give that a good mix. And what we have here is a 100% hydration starter. That means equal amounts of water and flour. Once it's mixed, cover the jug with cling film and poke a little hole in the top to allow the gas to escape. And what we're looking for is this to double in size over the next two hours or so. And it's worth noting at this point, making sourdough or artisan breads does take quite a while. Sourdough works much slower than commercial yeast, but the taste and texture is well worth the time invested. You need to manage your time accordingly. On the plus side, there is very little actual work involved at all. It's all about managing your time. If you don't have a mother starter going yet, you'll need to make one. Or even better, you can purchase the dried sourdough pack from my website. It's only £4 plus shipping and that's anywhere in the world. It comes with full instructions and there's a complete step-by-step -step video already on the channel on how to get it established. And once it is established, you'll have free sourdough yeast for the rest of your life. Sounds like a good deal to me. Okay, back to the recipe. Once your starter has doubled in size like this, we can begin the recipe. To a large bowl, add the 460 grams, that's 460 mils of water. This is a 77% hydration dough, if you're interested. Next, add the 100 grams, that's 3.5 ounces of the starter, to the water. I have gone a little bit over but that's okay with this recipe. And this is a good way of knowing that the starter is strong enough to begin the recipe. It should float on the water like mine is. Now mix it in until it's all dissolved into the water. Now add the salt to the white bread flour and mix it in and add that to the bowl. Next, add the 200 grams of whole wheat flour. You can use rye or spelt if you wish, or indeed a blend of any of the wholemeal flours, as long as it amounts to 200 grams or seven ounces. Right, using my trusty wooden spoon handle, I'll mix the whole lot together into a sticky mass as shown. Make sure you get all of that flour off the sides of the bowl using your bowl scraper. Mm -hmm. 
Once mixed, cover the bowl. I like to use a shower cap for this, and these are available on the website shop if you want one. Now place it in a warm spot and set your timer for one hour. Right, once that hour is up, it needs a quick fold. Wet the bench and turn out the door. And with wet hands, to prevent it from sticking, fold the door a few times as shown. Five or six turns is enough. The door should become quite smooth at this point. Now get it back into the bowl and cover it again and let it sit in a warm draft free spot for at least four to six hours. And this is where your time management comes in. You don't have to sit and watch it for all this time. Just plan your day around it. Like when you do your laundry. You don't sit and watch the machine for three hours, do you? Once that time is almost up, you can prepare a vessel like this and line it with parchment paper. And this is only to make it easier to transfer this sticky dough into your very hot Dutch oven safely. It'll all become clear in a little while. OK, my dough's been sitting for six hours now. And it's time to prepare the dough for its last stage. Start by generously dusting your worktop with flour as shown. Now as you can see my dough has risen very well. If yours is still a bit low, you'll just have to give it more time. That's the way sourdough works. Now carefully turn the dough out onto the floured surface, but be very gentle as you don't want to knock the gas bubbles out of it at this stage. And dust the top of the dough too. Now gently fold the dough as shown. Gather the bottom together as shown. Now carefully form it into a ball. Dust again with flour and carefully but confidently pick it up using your bench scraper and gently place it into the pan we prepared earlier with the parchment paper. Now cover it with a lightweight dry cloth and set it aside in its warm spot again while we get the Dutch oven up to temperature. Right, while that's resting, I need to heat up the Dutch oven for at least 30 minutes. So, preheat your oven to 240 degrees Celsius, that's 465 Fahrenheit, or gas mark 9. Now place the Dutchie into the main oven and set your timer for 30 minutes. And that's how long a cast iron Dutch oven takes to get up to the correct temperature to bake this bread. If you haven't got a Dutch oven, you can use an ordinary oven proof pan, as long as it has a good fitting lid. OK, the Dutch oven is up to temperature now. So have your dough close by on the top of your hob, and with your slashing blade, score a line across the door as shown. Go gently with this and take your time, as this wet dough will drag some. You only need to break the outer skin and go about 3 to 5 millimetres into the dough. Now carefully lift this seriously hot Dutch oven onto the cooker top. And remove the lid. And you'll see quite a bit of smoke from mine as the seasoning oil of its last cleaning is burnt off. Just make sure your extractors is running or it will set your smoke alarms off. Once again, very carefully pick up the dough using the paper and place it into the Dutch oven. And if you're using them, don't forget to put your gloves back on. Give the pot a quick swirl to centralise the dough. Now get the lid back on and get it back into the oven. 
You don't need water in the oven as this method creates its own steam inside the pot. Now set your timer in this initial bake for 25 minutes. And at this point I hope you don't mind if I give my two recipe books a bit of a plug. The books have lots of our favourite easy to follow recipes from our work kitchens in them. Both books are available in the website shop along with lots of other equipment I use in the videos. And by popular demand the skeleton style oven gloves are now available too. Just click on the eye icon top right of your screen and that will take you directly to the website shop. Once that 25 minutes is up, quickly remove the lid from the Dutch oven and get the oven door shut to keep in the heat. A little safety tip that most commercial kitchens will use is to place a white cloth over a hot unattended pan or lid in this case and that is to warn other trained staff that this is hot. Not a bad rule to use in the home environment too. Now set your timer again for 10 minutes to harden the crust up some more. Ok that 10 minutes is up and now it's time to remove it from the Dutch oven. Right on a metal surface tip the pot on its side. The bread should easily fall out and the paper will slip right off. And doesn't that look fantastic? An optional thing I like to do is to place it back into the oven commando style for an extra 5 minutes. It really crisps up that crust and allows the bread to stay crispy for an extra day or two. And there you go, a perfect sourdough crusty loaf. It's light, crispy and smells absolutely wonderful. A lot of time invested but the results are well worth it. Right I'll allow it to cool for 20 minutes or so and I'll show you the inside. And of course have a taste. Ok it's had around 20 minutes so I'll cut a couple of slices off. And as you can hear it's wonderfully crispy. And as you cut into it you just know it's going to be a fantastic bread. The texture looks great, the gas bubbles or crumb are just about perfect as in evenly distributed. Right it's still a bit on the warm side but I can't resist the taste with a good thick slather of my homemade butter. And that is so good. If you haven't tasted good sourdough bread before you're in for a treat. And I guarantee you'll give it a massive thumbs up. Really hope you try this one. And as promised at the beginning here is the latest list of my Patreon and PayPal supporters. And they are Mary Williams, D. Burdick, Amar Kadhim, Claire Simpson, Stephen Burry, Miranda Lynch, Shadow Phoenix, Stacey Gerb, Kate Bartolome, Robert Borland, Barty Ranch, Jim McCorrison, Katie Grammer, Gabrielle Armstrong, Tracy Pickering, Craig Morgan, Andrew Waddington, David Bottini, Jennifer Ober, Ryan Monger, Peter Horish Jr., Vivek Upadhyay, Davin Hanlon and his two girls Sophie and Emily, Maxine, Marianne Rolf, Franklin Haas and Ricardo Perez. Thanks very much guys, I really do appreciate all that you do in supporting the channel. Well thank you again for watching, please like, share, comment and subscribe by hitting the circle above. If you do subscribe, activate the bell icon next to the subscribe button on my channel page. And by doing that you'll be automatically notified every time I upload a new video. And in the meantime, here's a few of my other videos and playlists that you may want to watch. So until the next time, be safe in your kitchen and bye for now.